Uh, meeting to order. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, in addition to the agenda, I would just like to add a clarification for the library. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jim? Aye. Michael? Michael's your name. He's sleeping. <laughs> I'm an Aye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, because of time constraints, I believe you're all here for something on the agenda. Yes. So we'll go to the Rock Developments Soil Permit. It's on one of you like to, okay, Linda? Hi, uh, Linda Starpinski. And I had um, sent a letter copy of my letter that I was going to do Tuesday uh, and did you all get that yes you did. so I don't need to read it or you okay good um, my biggest concern is that no one seen everybody seemed to start investigating this all the three committees that I talked about and no one seemed to finish the investigation so the information that people said they were gonna ask for, I could not find anywhere that that information, number one, did formally get asked for. Number two, if it was answered, that it was dealt with. So I don't feel that any of the boards had full information to really decide if we should oppose this site or not. Now, I do realize that the state's engineers have gone through and sampled the soils. I, I read everything. I signed into that ENB site, and I read all the papers that were on there. And as far as our boards go, I read every single minute from September to this September to see anything that might be in the minutes. Now maybe something was there or not in the minutes because I've been in lots of meetings where that does happen. So my, that's my number one concern is that none of the boards followed up to see if this was something of value for the town. My second concern is that La Rock has already violated by dumping in that pit materials that should not have been dumped in there without permission. And they are going to be the ones guarding the tickets that are going in. We don't have anybody there from the town. We can't afford to have anybody just sitting there waiting for a truck to come through. The state doesn't have anybody. Every three months, they're supposed to send something to the state, and the state's supposed to verify. But I don't think we can trust, if they're already willing to do this before things even begin, how can we trust what they're going to do once that happens? They already dumped into Northfield, and Northfield asked them to stop dumping the materials. I know we have to have dumps somewhere, but at the same time, this is 5,000 tons a year for 10 years. Nobody knows after 10 years what that tonnage is going to be seeping through with rains and snows. Um, I don't want anything that's grown there. I don't want to eat milk, from, drink milk from cows that may have had their hay grown on there and the stuff is leached through. It's not just the water coming out of the taps. It's everything else that we don't even realize the water is there for. And until we really know that in 10 years, a study's been done, and the state has done studies on that and knows in 10 years that soil is going to be okay. I, I think we should ask for more information. And I don't even know if you guys get to decide. 
did, do you get to decide or did the state just say, hey, we need dumps, this is what we're gonna do and here we go. And that's not right either. And I've already contacted Sarah Coffey and told her I need to talk to her about this. That's it. My three minutes is up. Yes, Mark. I echo what Linda has said. Um, you know, I do have concerns about the environmental impact that it's going to have, uh, whether we know about those impacts right now or not. do not know. Um, contaminated soils certainly is a concern uh, for leaching and seeping into uh, the soils that are there. There are drilled wells. There is an aquifer. Um, there's a seasonal stream in the area, there's farmlands in the area, and I, I think that uh, there's a lot of unknowns. And it's very concerning that this facility can be put in without uh, much oversight. Uh, traffic is another concern. As we all know, West Road is a dead end road. Whatever traffic goes in has to come out the same way. Uh, there's a lot of dump, uh, heavy truck traffic now between the two pits, mm -hmm. meaning Lorox and Zaluznis. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna increase that. Uh, there's a lot of residential neighborhood, neighbor, uh, residential properties in that neighborhood. And to have these heavy vehicles every day, oh. you know, it affects the neighborhood. Um, so traffic is a <coughs> lack of oversight, okay? Uh, I deal with state agencies for different reasons, and the state agencies that I deal with are lacking staff, and they have been for years. And I do not see the state of Vermont going out to hire 100 employees, mm -hmm. or even five employees, to deal with this one facility or facilities similar to this. Um, Nothing against the state employees because I know they work hard, but there's not enough of them. And the government is not gonna hire any additional. So when they say that it's gonna be monitored and that there's conditions imposed on a permit, <clears throat> well, the conditions are only good on the paper that they're written if they're enforceable and if you have adequate staff to enforce those. Mm -hmm. And right now they don't have either. Um, and then I think we have to look at the long term. What is the end goal here? I understand that the rocks in business to make money and provide this facility for certain contaminated soils and all that. But these soils that are put in there, from what I heard at the, at the public hearing the other night, is, is that these soils can never be used again. You cannot turn and return this property into a residential neighborhood or anything like that. So what is the end goal here? Um, is the soil going to sit there for decades and not be able to be used? <clears throat> or is there a plan that hasn't been uh, pre presented to us yet on what the end goal is? But to me, there is no end goal except for filling that facility up with contaminated soils and leaving it for the town and the neighborhood to um, deal with throughout. Mm -hmm. Uh, decades um, and again at the public hearing they were saying the other night that uh, the contaminated soils would not leach or seep into uh, the existing soils there I don't understand how that can be just by nature soils seep leach and when they say that it's low level well, if you can never reuse those soils and you can't redevelop that property, to me, that's not low level. That's a high risk. Mm -hmm. so, I, I would encourage the select board to um, take a position on this facility, not to accept this facility as presented at this time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one other thing I wanted to say is we were told that 
it was going, they, they would have to renew the permit in 10 years. And um, if there were issues, we could sue. Well, who is the we that could sue? And who is going to pay for it? it? If the town doesn't approve it, then it, it doesn't, it's not the town. It's the individual landowners that live around it. And the eight people that live around it, I really, even though some of them do have some money, I don't think they can handle a lawsuit. And I know I couldn't handle a lawsuit. And um, <clears throat> we need to, yes, you have a legal remedy, but who can afford the legal remedy? And does it come back on the town? Does anybody else wish to say anything? <clears throat> yes. Marilyn King. Oh, hi, Marilyn. I can't see what brother <laughs> Um This is like history re repeating itself for me because when the Wyndham Solid Waste wanted to develop a landfill there on this very same site, um, we were concerned. And there is an aquifer that our well is on that serves eight homes there. And that aquifer was a main issue of why that was denied it, as I remember it. So if it was not, if it couldn't be cited for a solid waste landfill, well, how can it be um, how can it be permitted for this? I just have really concerns yeah. about our aquifer, plus all the other issues. Okay. I'm Mark Osborne. I have. Um, I, I echo those same thoughts as Marilyn. Many years ago, we were told that they were going to put a dump in there, and um, trucks were going to be trucking in and um, bringing in lots of garbage. And uh, we did have concerns, and I believe the ultimate thing that um, killed that was the aquifer mm -hmm. and the direction of the plume, should any of that seepage, well, it would, it would be seepage, um, work its way uh, into the aquifer, it would present a problem that we'd have to deal with at that time. There were a few fears of Love Canal kind of things that um, you know, were uh, similar. But um, so we don't know that. One thing I do know, uh, I've worked with the rocks for over 30 years, close to 40 years. I look at them as very honorable people. Um, they're in business. They're hardworking Americans. They would never intend to do anything wrong. But it's the question of what we don't know. And I understand, I don't know if this is true, but that the state actually is the antagonist here and that the state is looking for a place to locate such a dump. I don't know if that's true. But then if that be so, then I look to the state and say, what are you doing? Are you adequately in, uh, evaluating this situation and uh, its potential impact? Um, so, I'm concerned, um, and I look at the Larocs as very honorable people uh, and, and a very good business and, they, and, and that sort of thing. And they would never intend to do knowingly anything wrong that would hurt. But the question is, is what don't we know? Um, and so, we do know that there's such a thing in physics called leakage. Uh, seepage, uh, things that are in the soil and as they begin to be piled up and uh, accumulated, that seepage can become more and more dense. And But we also know that there is an aquifer and that we know that, that from previous battle uh, of putting a dump there, that that seepage would go most likely in the direction of the uh, watershed. Um, we on West Road also heard that recently that there's been approved uh, a junkyard to be put in. <laughs> so that's like oh no. So more trucks going up and down and um, you know so it, it, that's a different item that's not on the agenda here but I look at the this just another data point of are we thinking about the impact of the people that live on West Road and live around on Pond Road and, and all, I don't think, I'm not assured 
I don't think enough work has been done to assure me and, and communicate to me and others that this is not going to be detrimental to our homes, our water, uh, and our property values. So I, I put that forward and ask that uh, more work be done. Uh, and if there really is a, a, a scientific solution saying, yeah, this is not going to hurt, um, and here's why, um, I'd love to see that uh, put out. And uh, whatever party puts that out, that they would be held to that and not us to have to deal with the huge uh, impact 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. Again, our properties, a lot of times, we like to our children to have them. Are they going to be impacted? So, so, so I bring those concerns out. Thank you. Anybody else? Sir. I'd like to put on two hats here. First of all, my personal hat. I don't think it's a good idea. Now I'm going to put on my hat as chair of the Planning Commission. According to the rules that ANR goes by, there's nothing wrong with this project. I don't, in the Planning Commission, have any geologists, chemists, scientists. I got a pretty good waste management guy in Bob Spencer, but uh, that notwithstanding, A&R has investigated that, and they tell me that the developmental soils do not leach into the ground. They're the scientists. I have to take somebody's word for this. So with that in mind, um, the Planning Commission found nothing wrong with A&R's regulations and using that to d dump developmental soils. Um, the things that I think could be addressed that aren't under A&R's agenda is one, the traffic problem. Two, the problem with our planning commission a long time ago came up with a map for that area and we defined that area as a residential area. Well, if we develop, if we dump developmental soils there, that's never going to be a residential area. Again, that's not the purview of the Agency of Natural Resources. They don't con consider right. that in their, in their evaluation. So if you go to A&R, and you see the board's going to recommend that we don't do this. You really can't talk about leaching of developmental soils because they have the scientists and they're going to say, hey, we have proof that it doesn't do this. But you could go to them and say, listen, look to agency of transportation. What effect is it going to have on the, the traffic up and down that road? What effect is it going to have on Vernon's town plan that says we want to define that area as a residential area. Those are areas that you might be able to uh, get their attention with. But, uh, but as far as questioning their science, I think it's going to be a he said, she said type situation with where they have the pros and we have bad feelings about it. Um, that's probably enough. <laughs> Anybody else? Mike? Okay. Bill? I'd like to reiterate what this gentleman said on the end. And I know to me the truck problem on the road, that's going to be a small effect. My biggest concern is children in that neighborhood. Every time they bring in a truckload and they uncover it because they're going to have to have it covered, and it airborne stuff so when they dump it and then when they leave they're not going to cover their truck up so any residue the wind's going to suck it out of it and blow it in that whole area so when you look at children and if they raise in that area and that that dust is going to reach some of them some of them are going to be damaged for life because of the dust it's going to be floating around, and it's going to be floating around. I've plowed Vernon for over 40 years, and when you see the winds in our area, coming from the south, coming from the west, and the east, we get these east storms, you're going to have the wind stirring up. 
So they, to me, they would have to put it in a canister and cover it up. Just because that, Vernon is a residential town. That's our main thing. And to me, I feel safer with the, the atomic plant and everything being sealed up. But now they're just going to come in with trucks. Some are not going to have it buttoned down good, even if they work at getting it buttoned down good. When they uncover it and they raise that dump, you're going to have dust flying around. And that's the big concern that I see is if it's going to be airborne. And some of that's going to be around that whole area. And it's going to reach the houses. It's going to reach people's water. It's going to the lawns. I mean, so I like to just let the people know mm. I'm going to be dead and gone. <laughs> but we're going to, the, residential is going to be the main thing for Vernon. And to be allowing something in there that could ha harm that a whole area. I mean, it's bad enough you're going to have a junkyard out there. And who's monitoring that, making sure that all the crankcases, even. Even when you empty a, a motor or a transmission, or there's always going to be some oil leaking out. Mm -hmm. Always, no matter how careful you are, unless you put it on a cement slab and deal with it there. But now you've got something that's going to be airborne. Mm -hmm. And it, most of us aren't going to be here. But children are. Yeah. And because of being a bedroom town and being that area out there, Besides the water aquifer, they got the, the air quality is not going to be as good there. Trucks going in, trucks coming out, opening up, yes. dumping it, air floating around. Mm. <clears throat> I just want to reiterate what everybody said, and I, I think the town of Vernon should be very careful because <laughs> being a lister for many years and going up north and going to, se to seminars, Vernon is looked at this way because we've had the atomic plant. Mm -hmm. The atomic plant is safe or in this because I've toured it and I've been involved in it. This plant is the safest one in the world mm -hmm. and one of the smallest ones. And what they had to go through, they were closed down because mm -hmm. of politicians. Mm -hmm. Now you've got these politicians, they want to dump things on Vernon. So I don't want to see mm -hmm. something else in Vernon where they'll look later and say, well, that's, that's the place to put it, it's in Vernon, that's the place to put it in Vernon. So I, I really think the select board, the whole town, should say no on this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jim? Uh, in support of that, when, we, when, when he brought that up at the, at the meeting we had the other night, when A&R was here, A&R said they didn't look into airborne contamination at all. That wasn't part of their... Uh, the stuff that they looked into and they said they were going to take that back to their uh, engineers and scientists and see so it might be a point that you can bring up to them and say hey listen you forgot to do air quality stuff mm -hmm. and it's the polyaromatic hydrocarbons that are airborne that's can I expand on that when they uh, presented poly P A H's, they said uh, it's like when you cook bacon, that brown stuff that you get at the bottom of you grill a hamburger, that dark stuff at the bottom of it. Yes, that's P A H's. But also, any result of incomplete combustion of petroleum products, for example, the oil that's in your vehicle, if it gets pretty hot and little smoke comes off, those are P A H's. Mm -hmm. And they are pretty nasty stuff. Anything with gasoline, petroleum products that is incompletely burned, which happens all the time, that's also accepted in there. And it's not a heavy metal like arsenic or lead. Those are the ones that they say don't leach well. They right. just chemically don't, they don't saturate in water is what it is. But PAHs, are a whole bunch of chemicals. It's not one chemical. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a possibility that you could question them on the uh, research that's done on those guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ford, do you want to weigh in on anything, Michael? I am 
obviously against this. They already put materials in there without having a permit approved. They came in and visited us with not full information. They put a no trespass on a neighbor who was trying to protect his neighbors and neighborhood. I've already submitted my own letter on my behalf personally that I'm against it. And that's where I stand. Okay. Andy? No, I think, you know, Bill hit the nail on the head with the lack of regulation. I, I you know, the, the nuclear power plant's behind, directly behind my house. I sleep well every night, no concerns. It's a professional, well-run organization. and. What I'm seeing so far, I don't have that same feeling. It's concerning to me as well. This type of material belongs in a contained facility like a regulated landfill where they can have an area for contaminated soils where that soil can be mixed. It will aerate, it'll dry itself out, then be transferred to a hazardous waste treatment landfill like what used to be called turnkey up in New Hampshire, that's closed now, but we had contaminated soils in a job that I had, and we brought it up. We had a landfill. We had a 21st century landfill. It was put in an area. It was covered. Um, it was on a cement pad. It cost us a lot of money to build that cement pad. We did it. it the state made us do it. But that was then backhauled and it was taken the heck out of the area so that there wasn't any airborne concern. And lead may not leach into the soil, but lead certainly can be blown around in the air. Yes. Um, as can other things. I think this is a bad idea. I think it's been ill-conceived. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's been a lot of study done on it. I would ask the state in your letter, in the letter that we put, that we want a full hydrogeological study because they've only done a preliminary hydrogeological study and we want an air air quality study done in addition to all the things that the folks here have said residential area growth for the town all the traffic issues you know children playing in the they shouldn't play in the road but you know, they do. You know, they do. Uh, <laughs> Especially in a rural well, area was, on a know, rural road. Yeah, mom used to tell me to go out and play in the street but that's a whole different, <laughs> a whole different thing so um, this does not belong on West Road. It doesn't, there, there may be other areas in town, and I'm not in favor of this, that are more suitable. But when I see that water table up after a rain, it's, right. it doesn't just dry out with the air. It's leaching back in. So we need to be opposed to this. I am totally in agreement with everything that's been said. And I'm just feeling like because of what's already happened with stuff just getting dumped on the ground, that who, who is going to monitor this? And um, that it does need to be clearly contained. Um, and the fact that it's in a residential area is just wrong. The fact that a dump could not be put in this area speaks volumes um, because we hear all the time of things that were you know people were convinced by science was not going to be a problem and then and years later a it's a huge problem mm -hmm. huge and um, mm -hmm. I just feel like this is going down that path um, I thought that when they had started dumping without their permits and were shut down, I thought that was the end of the story, but um, but apparently the state is really trying to find a site, so it got, you know, revived. Why did they pick Vernon to, to do this dumping? Is it because the owner the, who owns it and we have no zoning. I mean, why did they pick Vernon <laughs> to? Yeah. Zoning is a piece of it, I'm sure. Yeah. But they, there are many, they, they many towns. That right. Are that's right. They brought that up at the meeting. The uh, one of the people from A and R said, "You don't have zoning. That's what you get." Uh -huh. That's a quote wow. from A and R. I have it written down in my little uh, my notes right. for this. Exactly. <laughs> But our town plan 
and Act 250 should give us something to go on. Right. And because we did thank God for the people who worked so hard on the town plan for a couple of years. Thank you. Because that was just revised, what, two years ago? And we have Act 250 that we can fall back on. But, you know, then that becomes our legal expense to have to do that. Mm -hmm. I just know one reason is because we don't have zoning, and I know the politics the up a half of the Vermont is this way when it comes to anything in Vernon because we had the atomic plant. And the atomic plant, once again, was the safest in the country, the mm -hmm. safest in the world and one of the smallest ones right. and politics closed that but this thumb is still down on Vernon and I really think Vernon is going to have to stop anything that the state is going to try to dump down here and that's mm -hmm. what they're looking at mm -hmm. and I feel safer with more Vermont Yankee stuff because we had the safest plant in the country and w partly because it was monitored by people. It was not associated to another country, to another big company that's just looking at incomes. There, the, there was an independent group that ran that, and it wasn't until it got sold and then resold mm -hmm. that the danger element came into effect. But because of the politics, we have to back off on anything and. Just look, just think of this. We just read an article on, you go to the store, you buy bread, it's in plastic. You buy meat, it's in plastic. You buy products, all kinds of food stuff is in plastic. And plastic made out of oil, byproduct, and it causes cancer, and they know that. And we got our children across the country, and you listen to these, like the Shiners and, and uh, the different ones, the schools, the hospitals, they're trying to eradicate it. But as long as an oil byproduct, and then when this gentleman brings up that the stuff that's going to be airborne is basically going to be probably an oil byproduct. So now we're putting more stuff in the air. And I, I'm telling you, I've seen when dump trucks raise it up and it dumps, you're going to get dust, you're going to get airborne, and that. There's no way they're going to stop that airborne stuff. And just and politically, we have got to really stand firm when it comes to Vernon because most of the state looks down on Vernon because of their prejudice against the atomic energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They stated at the meeting the other night that they want this to be the first in Vermont. That was stressed, the first in Vermont. They're going to have other sites, but Vernon is their first in the state. Yep. Do we need to be the first? Right. Yeah. It, Madam Chair, it would seem to me, and I'm not putting anything on the Wyndham Solid Waste District, that's not, but someplace like that. Now that's closed up and they're, they're, it's all recycling mm -hmm. now, but there are other areas within Southern Vermont where there, is a controlled environment where this stuff could go. Mm -hmm. It need not go on a piece of private land that is surrounded by residential areas. There is a place and a spot for this, and West Road isn't it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have, a, I have a question. Is he already dumping there? No. They did he for a was. while and were stopped. I, yes. He was. Yeah. He was, and they were. He, he, they stopped. They were in violation of whatever permit. Because I know were. he tried to dump in Northfield, Mass, and they yeah. kicked him out. Yeah. And again, I think Mr. Snow is right. The, the, the Rocks are good business people. They're good corporate citizens for for our area. But this is an ill-conceived plan in a in a really bad spot. Yeah. Carol, no, that's my question. Okay. I just want to make a motion. Sir, I would like to move that the town go on record with the appropriate agencies of the state that the select board on behalf of the town are adamantly opposed to this and that a full hydro geological study as well as an air quality study 
be undertaken as well as a traffic, uh, more traffic study. Do I have a second? Thank you. So my second is. No, I'm sorry. Thank you, Michael. Uh, is there further discussion? Yes, Michael. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. 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 Thank you for your input. Please make sure you send your input to them to flood their mailboxes with information. Thank you for having this special meeting. You're welcome. Yeah, um, we need to look at the emergency management generator and few gas tanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, folks. So, um, we're to the point where we need to get two 1,000 gallon LP gas tanks. Yes, and I have, contract, I have contacted many um, people who contract with um, putting those in for us and supplying us with gas and have been told by every single distributor in this area that because it's a generator, they will lose money. I'm sorry. Because this is a generator, they lose money because the, they tend to just sit full and not continually filling them. And we need to purchase the tanks. Uh, you're better off to purchase your tanks anyways, and you can play the market on exactly. what you're going to buy. And that was going to be the next thing I was going to say, mm -hmm. because then we're not tied to a distributor. So I have a proposal. I have put it uh, up for everybody. It was in the middle of the packet. But, um, Variable payments. rate pricing? It was a... Um, it was an email from, I had put it out when we had the meeting, it was a free handout from, from the other night, from Tuesday next meeting, yes. Oh, I don't have that stuff. So, oh, I don't have my packet, I'm sorry. So for the materials, it's $17,928.42 for the labor. He's guesstimating because it's going to take two drivers and a crane Hello? operator to deliver Hello? the tanks. <laughs> and then two additional folks to yeah, install the tanks, and then they're at the mercy yeah. of the inspector, the state inspector, who comes out. So that will, you know, also be um, another factor. Yeah. So total including tax, which we don't pay, oh, and contingency, he has estimated $28,838.44. Yeah. You want to give me a figure so that we have something to work with. We have to say that um, Friday we will be connecting the pole to the um, okay, so the new pole to the new service, mm -hmm. um, and once that is done, we'll be ready for the big gas tanks. And we are under budget as far as materials and whatnot, so um, so we're we're doing good otherwise with this project. So we yeah, have enough yeah, money yeah, yeah. Uh, for this? If we were to use ARPA funding to cover the full balance, we would have close right. to hey, enough sir. money to, to yeah, cover this. I think you projected a little bit high to make sure. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no. So I don't know. This 28000 is on top of? The grant, because you, the grant. this is something that I could include. Mm -hmm. I think the rest of it was to come from the money anyway, because mm -hmm. the grant for fifty thousand, which only covers a little bit less than half. I move that the board authorize ARPA money to be used uh, for the completion of the gas tanks and other necessities to get this project done. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jean? Aye. I mean, aye. Motion carries unanimously. <laughs> and the last thing is does the library really need to keep asking us for requests to use the lobby? No. So. Would you please make that a motion so Jean knows? I move that the library be authorized to utilize the lobby for its programs and sales 
during the course of any year at any time. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? I would like it to go through the town administrator. <laughs> right. What's that? Yeah, it, 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 to go through the town administrator. So she knows what you're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I was Thank you, to Michael. Thank you, Michael. Kind of well, keep in contact. That's my report. Now, okay. all those in favor, Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Tom? Aye. Jean? Aye. On the aye, the motion carries unanimously. We're going to retain the motion to adjourn so someone can get their car towed. breakfast. So moved. <laughs> Michael. Aye. 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 We are adjourned at 941. Is that going to be? <laughs> <laughs>